You know what? I'm having I'm having LGB, LGBT topics in the next hour. I'm sure we can come up with a lot of costumers for that. <laughs> we could get the best costumes for that parade. Oh, yes. And Halloween, you know, oh, think. Think of the possibilities. You know, one thing, I, in all seriousness, I have to notice this. Yeah. Uh, Rita Mae Brown mentioned this years ago in her novels, is that what is this people's obsession? The folks who are, quote, unquote, pro-life or, you know, anti-same-sex marriage— They've got this obsession with what other people do with their bodies. I mean, look at one of the titles, boundforlife.com. What, what's that about? Well, maybe they feel bound for life with who they are. And, you know, the next thing you do is you start projecting and you start having to try to change that in your own mind. So you, you start pushing it onto other people. I mean, that's how I see it. They're either very repressed or, or they've been uh, brought up a certain way that's extremely strict and, you know, then automatically they've got to get rid of some of that stuff. So they push it on to everybody else. Oh, you're so much nicer than me. My my brain went straight to S&M, Down for Life. <laughs> well, uh, I see I'm a guest on your show. Oh, that's true. They, one more time, you'll hear a whole lot of things <laughs> come out of my mouth you're not going to be happy with. Well, and here we have liveoffensively.com. By the way, I'm talking to Laffy Got a Laugh from the Political Carnival. Her uh, website is linked on ours, LF. TLC.com slash live. A uh, guest in the room says, hey, they're trying to poison people with high fructose. Oh. And Susan says very, very seriously, if they actually adopted kids, that would be something. But, of course, they're not doing that. If you go to the website liveoffensively.com, there's a very assertive-looking young woman with goth black hair with virgin across her chest. And that oh. immediately put me in mind of something else. So I went to look, and I, I saw, yes, you can still buy the ex-masturbator T-shirts. Oh. I don't know if you know that that particular campaign. Well, I want to get over to that site immediately after the show. Excuse me, right? <laughs> Say that again slowly they're, and they're, seductively. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the first is liveoffensively.com. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to follow the, uh, you want to go to the Passion for Christ movement, which is p4cm.com, and you can get your ex-masturbator T-shirt. And these are in all seriousness. And again, it comes down to, do you people ever think about anything else than what, what we're doing with our genitals? Just... No, apparently not, at least not in public. I mean, in private, I don't think they do anything. I think they only get it out in public. It's the safest way to do it. They have, they have no, oh, I can't, I can't say what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, please don't. I have a career at stake here. Yes, I understand. <laughs> but it, it does seem like, I mean, if you subtracted what people did with their genitals from any other identity issues about being gay or being bi or, you know, or masturbating, there'd be nothing to talk about. And I'm wondering, are these people getting any at home? No, they're not. And that's the end of the discussion. Um, what I notice uh, with the kids I work with, by the way, are the ones who are brought up in families like, like many of these families are, where they feel a lot of uh, rules and, and uh, virginity is a big topic and, you know, a, a lot of repression. These are the kids that once they get to be about 11th graders, they're the most rebellious. They're the ones that start piercing everything and uh, doing things that their parents, I'm sure, would not like them to do. So there is... Uh, an immediate backlash from the kids. Um, a lot of them, I'm sure, grow up not like that. You know, good kids, mm -hmm. good girls and boys, and some of them don't. But but the ones I'm thinking of are, are more prevalent than the ones who tend to obey those rules all the time for the rest of their lives. Now, maybe when they get to be adults, they go back and start being a little more um, judicious about their lives in certain ways. But Honestly, the, the kids I see who were brought up so strictly, they end up rebelling. And that, yeah, that's that's the hope that I'm taking away from the, from this whole issue. It yeah. is that is that these are kids, and mm -hmm. they're gonna one day they're going to wake up and say, uh, "Wait a minute, <laughs> there may be another side to the world here." Yeah, I'm thinking when they learn to read, because these kids sound awfully young. What are they like five with the cupcakes? So once they actually learn to read and 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 their brains develop and they are able to make their own judgments, I have hope that they'll see beyond this. Well, I, I, I'm a little worried about that theory because the, the, the Passion for Christ X masturbator T-shirts are all aimed at teenagers. So I, I don't know how much how much we can count on that. I do want to leave you with one thought on that, Laffy, uh -oh, and, and, okay. and, I, and I hope you do join us again soon. It's been a joy. <laughs> I, are you a proud X masturbator Get a T-shirt. As a former masturbator, I plan to get every color. I want everyone to know the power of Jesus is stronger than the devil's urge to purge. Was Jesus Jesus the master of his own domain? <laughs> I'm so I'd like to not leave you with that. Going near that. <laughs> Thank you, Laffy. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Angie. <laughs> and Gotta Laugh is on Twitter at 
capital G, capital L, gotta laugh, L-A-F-F. And you can also find, of course, the Political Carnival, where she blogs both seriously and humorously. 